All right, guys, I'm down here on the golf green today to talk about soil pH and doing some corrections. As you can see, I have one of my HANA meters in here testing out what the pH of my greens mix is. And if you can't see that, it is very high. I'm reading just above a nine pH. So there is some correction that needs to be done here. But for, before I take this as it is what it is, we're gonna test a couple other spots. So let's jump right in. So as suspected, the pH on the green is high and it's going to need a correction. I want my bent grass growing in more acidic conditions. The bluegrass is gonna be a little bit more flexible. The old lawn grew at about a 7.7 pH with no trouble, never showed any signs of deficiency, it was fine. Could have always used maybe doing a pH adjustment, but I never did one. The new lawn should be similar, if not a little higher, because this soil was stockpiled for a while. It was natural soil. It's just sort of high pH up here. So. My guess, before we get too far into it, is that we're gonna be doing sulfur on both the green and the lawn, and we'll take a look at the lawn right now. Okay, so I grabbed some soil from a few different places in the lawn, and I wanna just show you the, the consistency here. So the soil up here, uh, the top soil is predominantly clay. It's fairly high CEC, and you know, it is crumbly, right? You can see how it kind of crumbles like this, but you can also, Given good pressure, you can roll it up and you can form balls like this, showing more of the clay content. So it's kind of in that middle, you know, clay, clay to clay loam. Um, but, you know, essentially really good at holding nutrients, definitely obviously more dense than what's down below, finer particles. And so if a pH correction is needed on soil like this, it's going to take considerably more lime to bring it up or uh, sulfur to bring it down than it would with a sand-based lawn or sand-based green. So let's see what we've got here. Okay, so what did that tell us? We've got crazy high pH down in the sand. We've got pretty much close to neutral up here in the lawn, so it's really not gonna need anything, no sort of adjustment. Great. That means it's go time. It's going to be optimal for fertilizer applications and anything I put to it is going to be utilized very well. The soil's working with me, no battles. So let's talk about what we're going to have to do to the green since we don't really need to do anything up here but feed it, water it, and mow it and have a great looking lawn. The green is gonna require an application of sulfur. Let's go take a look. In anticipation of the green being high pH, I had already made an order of some elemental sulfur in order to fix a problem that I was most certainly going to have. So the good news is I'm not going to have to apply anything up to the main lawn and this bag, this 25 pound bag is going to do really well for me. So because again, I knew that I was going to be working on the green, this is a powder and it's a wettable powder, but that's not really what I'm going to be using this for. This is 90% sulfur, like you would find in, in any of the elemental sulfur bags like Tiger 90, but it's ground down. And a lot of the time this is used um, on like, obviously you can see right here, controls black spot, powdery mildew, leaf spot, rust, brown canker on roses, listed diseases, insects and shrubs, flowers, vegetables and fruits, controls thrips, rust mites, red spider mites, and two spotted mites um, on citrus for use in residential lawns and gardens. I am obviously not going after any sort of 
uh, fungus. I'm not going after any sort of bug. I am going for a corrective pH on the sand itself. So that's what this is actually gonna be for. The reason that it's listed for all these is because it's ground into a powder that you can spray. And uh, if I used a standard sulfur that you would buy, like the, the pellets um, that come, it would be kind of a little bit too big for what I was gonna put on the green. So this is gonna work really, really well, get down into the sand fairly quickly and start breaking down. But let's talk about the difference between this and sulfate. So elemental sulfur is exactly what it sounds like. This is an element, okay? Sulfate is an anion, which means it's already in plant available form. That's why you see it on fertilizers. That's why it's part of ammonium sulfate. That's why it's part of potassium sulfate. That, that is the main uh, positive for that material is it's plant available. Sulfur itself takes time to break down before it can actually be made plant available. So that's typically why it's used for pH corrections first and foremost. You won't start to get oxidation on sulfur to start making it plant available until the soil temps get hot. And we're talking like July, August. So for crops, farmers and things like that, you can't do a correction of sulfur deficient ground um, if you're going this way and expect it in the first year. It wouldn't really make a difference as far as uh, the sulfur, um, it wouldn't make a difference in sulfur deficiencies and bringing that up until really the following season. So it's kind of an ongoing thing. Now, there are limitations to the amount of sulfur that we can put down, depending on the soil type that you have. Typically, it's not recommended to go more than 10 pounds a year per thousand square feet. If I had a nine pH up on my lawn that was predominantly clay, like you saw, this is gonna be like a five year process to be able to bring it down into a good zone because it would take somewhere near 40 pounds per thousand maybe more to get it down because every year I'd be fighting back against it. On the sand, it takes considerably less, but if I were to go say from an eight and a half to a seven and a half, you know, I might need 10 pounds to 12 pounds, but if I'm going from a nine and trying to get it down to a seven, it's going to take considerably more than that. So the way I'm gonna kind of work this in because that is sand-based green, it's gonna be, it's gonna be going down and getting down into the sand over time is I'm gonna go at a somewhat higher amount first. I'm gonna put about five pounds out across the entire green today. I'm gonna to water it in, and then I'm gonna wait a little while, and then I'm gonna start doing one pound applications per thousand square feet and just sort of take it through uh, the rest of the year, and then we'll see kind of how things end up at the end of the season. Okay, so I've got five pounds loaded into the drop spreader here, and I'm gonna go around as long as it takes on sort of the lowest that I can have this thing set get all this material out, and then water it in. So with that done, we're now on to the next. It's time to water it in. You can probably see how quickly it's starting to wash in. That's only after about two or three minutes of the sprinklers running. So it breaks down really quick. I could have actually pumped that through the shape and hose in sprayer, but I felt like it was gonna take probably way more effort. Um, because it is a flowable, you can mix it into a backpack sprayer and put it out that way. I just thought for ease of use, this would work pretty well. And it did okay. The drop spreader did decent. Um, you know, it got it out. It took a little while, which is fine. It allowed it to spread a little bit more. But now that this is down and I get it start soaking into the ground and soaking into the ground, this is gonna help buffer every fertilizer application that I put on and hopefully increase the density and the color and the effectiveness of that fertilizer so that this green can be fully, fully decked out within the next 30 days or so. That's the goal. Okay, so I guess the big question on everybody's mind is, when do we start doing things out here? Well, I think today's the day, but that's gonna be for another video. Everything is ready to get fed. Uh, you can see it's really greened up quite a bit on its own. This is the spring growth happening. It's been mowed really kind of a bunch of times at this point. The auto mower has been doing a great job, but there are things happening on the lawn that have to be tended to. And number one 
is going to be weeds. There were some weeds that were starting to show themselves last year. Some of the thinner spots definitely got some dandelions. We're gonna be treating those in an upcoming video, plus some other weed control around the property. That's stuff that's gonna to have to be handled here. But it's time, it's go time. The weather shifted. We don't have any snow in the forecast. Temperature's about to start warming up. So I wanna go ahead and get this guy fed and you need to stay tuned and be subscribed to see that. So I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.